It's holiday season and we are headed to India for two weeks. This video will showcase our gorgeous trip around temples and our drone shots and hey, our hey, outfit hey, shit. What? They've seen that like a million times. Oh. Let's get down to business and let them know what it costs to make their dream vacations come true. By the end of the video, we'll let you know a grand total of how much a vacation like this might cost. That's a good idea. We don't actually have a drone, so I'll get my bags. Okay. First up, flights. Which is the biggest expense? After all, that's what's gonna get you across the globe. So make sure to begin scoping out your prices early. It's best to purchase your flights about six months in advance. Yeah, Google flight should work. As long as you can avoid Christmas season, the flight should be around $750 or to $1,000 per person round trip. Flying with Santa is pretty expensive. So we've arrived at the Mumbai airport at 4.30 a.m. and the first thing is to get connected to the world via a SIM card. If you're a foreigner like me, you can pick these up for about $20 at the airport or if you hold Indian citizenship like Telwin, you can get them for $5 on the side of the road. My parents are coming in here from Pune, after which we jet set to Jaipur, Agra, Delhi, Vishakapatnam, Kochi and lastly Pune. After our SIM card was secured, we thought we were headed straight to our hotel, but it turns out that one does not accept non-Indian citizens like me, so make sure you check that out on the website. So we took plan B, which happened to be this awesome little pod. The pod is a fun adventure. It's simple, it's clean, it comes with a free locker and it costs around $30 a person. For all your domestic flights and hotels, use makemytrip.com. They not only have great prices, it'll also help you keep things organized. After a quick overnight in Mumbai, it's back to the airport with mom and dad to head out on our first adventure, our trip to Jaipur. A domestic flight from Mumbai to Jaipur was $37 per person. I packed all of my stuff for Rajasthan. Let's see if there's some elephants in our future. So here in Jaipur, we just hired a cab for the day. The cab cost around $30 and took us to all the fun touristy spots around Jaipur. Here we are at Amber Fort, which has two prices. One for me, which was $8 admission, and one for Telwin, an Indian citizen, for 30 cents to get him in. The elephant rides here are well known. They'd cost around $15 for two people to get up there. Mind you, you gotta walk your way down. Then you can take moments like this, which are priceless. Now after our day has set in Jaipur, we are going to hop in a 4 hour car ride to Agra, which was $33. Now it's time for the iconic Taj Mahal. It cost me 60 cents to get in. It's kinda expensive to travel with Catelyn. It cost $14 for her and an ad additional $3 for both of us to get inside access to the tomb. Shoe covers and bottled water is included per person. This was our first experience with India's coin system for tourist attractions, where upon getting your ticket, you'll get a coin, but when you leave the attraction, you have to return your coin, otherwise you'll be fined an additional $2.
While you're here, don't forget your classic family picture. Now that's pretty much what we did in Agra. Next stop is Delhi. It's a three hour road trip and cost us around $31. Now while Carolyn's taking a nap, let's talk about food. Oops, this one's the flight. It's free, but make sure to wake up for it. What didn't we eat while in India? Luckily for us, we didn't need to set aside a huge budget for food because India has a lot of options. Once I realized my tummy could take it, you could not tear me away from eating from street vendors. This meal was 20 cents, was very entertaining to watch them make, and was some of the softest chapati I've had. The great thing about vendor food is basically whatever you can point at, your bill never surpasses $3. So as long as you're staying to the streets, your wallet is safe. But if you're looking to avoid street food, feel free to head inside to the smaller roadside restaurants where you can eat a great meal for about $4. And the more upscale, fancier restaurants cost about $10 a person. Of course, you can find restaurants that cost way more, but if you're looking for those, you're probably not watching our video. And like they say, the best meals are the ones that you get at home. And luckily enough, I have quite a bit of family in India. As a safety precaution, don't forget your bottled water. Marpani ki bottle, bisleri nahi. The original water, 10 rupees. Now Delhi, here we are, the capital of India. Delhi has a bunch of iconic sites and historical buildings. You can walk around them all day. Most of them are free. Selfies with random strangers, they're more of a mutual exchange. We're here at the Lotus Temple and we just took off our shoes so we can go inside and meditate and pray. Well, sometimes your wife does ask you to take awkward pictures and there they are, they land up in your video anyways. The next stop is the Qutub Minar. It's a pretty iconic destination. It costs 46 cents for an Indian and around $8 for a foreigner. If you want a more accurate tour guide than Telwin, you can always hire one from outside the gates. Just to give you a glimpse, this hotel was $21 a night in Delhi. The monkey that scares your wife tags along for free. The monkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was really big. <laughs> scared me. Next up, we are headed to see my brother and his family. He's part of the Indian Navy and currently based in Vishakapatnam. 
While we're in mid-flight, let's talk about public transport. First and foremost, always use an app like Uber or Ola, else these drivers are gonna rip you right off. In India, your Uber choices are a car, a rickshaw, or a moped. I always selected the rickshaw. Ubers roughly cost around $2 for a 30-minute ride. Depending on the city, it might vary, but that's a good rule of thumb. As for other modes of public transport, be it a bus or a boat, they cost around 20 cents for a 30-minute ride. The price to cross the river in a makeshift ferry? Fairly cheap, and the memories are priceless. Here we are, touchdown Wysak. By the way, that flight cost us $51 a person. It's officially South India. Well, it's family time. Food, accommodation is all taken care of here. Now it's time for me to take the credit cards out for a spin. I went sari shopping out in Vizag. I found three saris that were each about $20 to $40. Next up, a $60 ticket is gonna fly us to God's own country, Kerala. We took some pit stops to some area attractions like this National Choir Museum, but in the end, we were really here for our houseboat. Now, to cut to the chase, the houseboat costs around $60 a night, which includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In our opinion, it's well worth the price. Next up is this cute Shakara boat, which is $10 to rent the entire boat for a three hour ride or nap, am I right? Now for a quick beach pit stop and back to Telwyn's hometown of Pune, where we get to stay with family. No cost there.
Now for the fun part, let's summarize the entire trip. After all, how much did we swipe on a credit card? So let's start with flights. Now flight prices, they mainly depend on where you fly from, the time of the year you intend to fly and when you book the tickets. So as a ballpark, let's go with $1000 for a round trip flight. So for two tickets, that's $2000. As for hotels, on a two week trip, you might find yourself 12 nights in a hotel. Let's average out to $40 a night. That totals up to $480. Next up, domestic flights. Let's say we fly to four cities as a couple. That's eight tickets, averaging out to $50 a ticket. Totals up to $400. Your fun activities, which would be entrance fees to the Taj Mahal, Kutub Minar, and any other attractions are on average $8 per person for non-Indian citizens. Multiply that by 28 attractions because you have two people with you, you're looking at about $224 for attractions. Road trips are what we consider those long taxi rides between cities, where we took those was between the Golden Triangle. Those are going to be about $35 per ride, which calculates to $140 total for your two-week trip. A comfortable food estimate per person per day is about $5. That gets you your street food and your mid-sized restaurants, no problem. For two people, for two weeks, you can calculate about $140 in total for food. And lastly, Ubers are a great price, so I would calculate in about $5 a day for your Uber rides throughout the city, making it about $70 total. Calculating to a grand total of about $3,454. You can round up to $3,500. We hope you have a great time in India. So there you go. It's a decent estimate you can work with. For any specific questions, please let us know. And in case you've got any tips and tricks up your sleeve, do comment. It would certainly help us and future travelers. Thank you. Share, like, and subscribe to our channel so you can catch more of our India trip and our other adventures. Subscribe to our Instagram channel for behind the scenes tidbits.